Hello everyone, and welcome back to Subnautica. This is episode 7. Last time, we attempted to shut down the um, planetary defense weapon uh, that shut down the Sunbeam, and uh, we found out that we're infected, and infected individuals cannot lift the planetary quarantine that is uh, the lockdown that's in effect. Uh, we need to we need to cure ourselves somehow by going to a deep sea research facility, I think. Uh, we also fixed the drive cores on the Aurora. We had a hell of an adventure uh, finding uh, some very valuable uh, resources as well, which is very, very cool. Uh, we now are going to embark on a journey of trying to make things. Uh, we've got uh, another, we've got a module for the Seamoth, and um, we've also got to do stuff in regards to the prawn suit. I think we might be able to build a prawn suit. Maybe. Um, I might need, I might need some more things. Uh, we will just have to wait and see, I suppose. I'm going to just put some stuff in my inventory and hope for the best, you know? Just put stuff in our inventory go to the fabricator and um, and hope for the best. Let's see how we go. So let's let's pull this bad boy up. Let's have a look. Now, I think the prawn suit will need to be made elsewhere, probably at the vehicle upgrade thing where we made the sea moth. And then the sea moth upgrade can be made at the modification station. So first, I have to make we can make our plasteel ingot of which we actually need okay we need three of those in total three titanium ingots to make three plus steel ingots that is possible let's make one at the very least right now um, now to make um, enameled glass we need to make glass Quartz and stock of tooth and glass. Okay, so let's do that. We need to make two of those. Let's get our stalker teeth. And let's get our quartz. Um, maybe while I'm here, I'll put away something else so I can free up some more space. Um need some more, more titanium for titanium uh, ingots as well. Alright, let's make glass. Let's make enameled glass. I now have to make more enameled glass. Get a couple more quartz out. There we go. Just back and forth between these beautiful lockers of ours as we make this stuff. And then error gel. We need a gel sack and a ruby. <coughs> Guess what I've got in my inventory? Gel sacks and rubies, baby. Very good. Okay. Uh, I believe my gel sacks are here. I don't know. Hang on, just two error gel? Yeah. Okay. Let me dive into my ruby collection. Maybe I can put gold away. I don't think we need gold right now. Right, lovely. Uh, let's make some aerogel. This is our first time making aerogel, but we need it, so we're gonna make it. Cool. Okay, now it's time to do titanium uh, ingots. Got enough lithi uh, lithium. If I could pronounce words, that would be great. Straight to business today. We, we, we're really getting into it. Um, let me put the sea glide away. Actually, I'll put the sea glide. Oh, I'll put the sea glide in my sea moth. Get that out of there. Oh, yeah, it's full of shit. <laughs> it's full of shit. Never mind. Um, I put a bunch of materials in here, didn't I? I need these. God, this is a mess. Um, every my, my whole <laughs> inventory, inventory management. Um, I'm, I'm so good at it. I'm so very good at it. Doing a great job. 
tell me how good I am. Tell me I'm doing a great job. Um, I'm, I think I'm just storing random stuff in here. So let's just do that for now. Open storage. Give me those. Get that out of there. Give me that upgrade. Perfect. All right, we can now make the depth module mark two. Now I need to pull out all of the titanium that I own ever. Um, and it's probably not enough, so we might need to go on a metal salvage related uh, adventure, naturally. So that'll be fun. Store these for now. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 12, 18. Okay. Perfect. Should be able to make two. Look at this crafting going down right now. So exciting. Two titanium ingots with our titanium. We did have enough after all. Now I just need lithium. Thank God for all of these um, lockers. I swear to God. Otherwise we'll be screwed. All right, there we go. One of those. Another one of those for good measure. How exciting, guys. We are making a prawn suit and a depth module for our Seamoth today. We're making both. Um, okay, let's get some stuff. I need my magnetite. I need two diamonds and two lead. All the materials have been assembled. Lovely. All right. Modification station, depth module mark two. Lovely. And then let's chuck this bad boy in here. Dap. I think, oh, dude, it's 500. I only thought it was going to go up by 100. Oh, that is so exciting. So instead of 300, it's gone to, we, 300 was our max before. I was expecting it to go to 400. Oh, cool. Mark three might be 800 then, which is cool, which is where that deep sea research facility is. All right, we can go 500 meters down now. That is both terrifying, yet uh, so very exciting. Um, and now... We are going to go to our vehicle station, which is where I assume that we can make our prawn suit. And then we'll figure out All systems online. what the whole prawn suit thing is about. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Mobile vehicle bay. Let's make a vehicle. We still don't have all the ingredients for a Cyclops, but that's also going to be cool because that's our submarine. It is normal when first piloting a <coughs> to feel a sense of limitless power. Prawn operators receive weeks of training to counteract this phenomenon. You will have to make do with self-discipline. <laughs> oh, goodbye. It sinks straight down. Prawn suits sink. Limitless power. Welcome aboard, Captain. Ooh. Unlimited power! Ooh. I can attack things now. Look at this. So that's why we can get a torpedo arm and then a drill arm. Oh, I can jump. Yeah. You didn't like that, did you? Go walk that off, you fuck. Unlimited power! All right. And then we can, I can like boost myself. I'm assuming that I can dock this bad boy in the moon pool. Oh my god, this is cool. Ooh! You know what? Like the thought of being in a prawn suit actually kind of terrifies me because you need a jetpack. So if like, what if you fall off a little underwater cliff edge, you just sink to the bottom. All right, there we go. Look at that. 
And then we can put prawn suit upgrades in here. I don't think we have a prawn suit upgrade. We only have a Cyclops upgrade that we randomly picked up. Cyclops engine efficiency, yeah. Um, so we do not have any upgrades. What upgrades are there for us to make, actually? Let's have a look. Jet upgrade, crystal and sulfur, nickel ore, which we do not have. We'll be, we can actually make this drill arm. And then we should be able to make the torpedo arm as well. This would be cool. A standard payload delivery system adapted to fire torpedoes, but then we have to make them. The good news is we know where to get magnetite. We found a bunch of it in that Degasi base. <clears throat> so we can make a bunch of vortex torpedoes. Um, but we also know that that's probably going to be, you know, a rare thing to use. We've got the depth module, which we can't make because we don't have nickel ore. So I'm not sure how deep the prawn can go. I should probably put the hull reinforcement on my Seamoth <laughs> because of uh, how much I goddamn damage it, especially with the perimeter defense system. You know, that would have been, that would have been a good one too. Um, prawn suit thermal reactor, recharges power cells in hot areas, which is cool. Need some kyanite for that. All right, well, I can go get some metal salvage, get some lithium. We do have some diamonds. How many diamonds do I have in total? Let's let's whip out the collection of everything right now. Okay, I need to go get some more diamonds, it looks like. Oh no, I'm running low on diamonds. How unbelievable. A first world problem or an alien world problem I guess you would say right now all right we can make a hull reinforcement make a grav trap to go fishing um, I can make the drill arm Okay. Oh, oh, dude, we can make, ooh, we can make the depth module mark three. We've got rubies and we can make another plasteel ingot. Ooh. We can make another one. Very good, very good. That makes me quite happy actually. Nice. Good to know. All right, well we can make we can make things. That's the name of the game, baby. Not really, but we, we can indeed make things. Okay. The prawn suit's cool because we'll be able to go and get like, resources and stuff, and that's what we're going to primarily use it for, and then the Seamoth will be our little exploration device. So I think what we're going to do is... Where do we make the hull reinforcement? Let's make it at, um... Where do I make that vehicle upgrades? I can't make it at this station, modification station. We make it at the... Hmm. I'm having a I'm having a brain fart moment. Cause I can only craft vehicles themselves here, right? I've forgotten how to craft vehicle upgrades all of a sudden. Pretty sure this is just isn't this stuff that we just like fabricated? 
I'm just doing so much back-to-back -back crafting and making things that my brain just stopped working all of a sudden. Oh, hang on, it's this thing. There. Wait. This. God, so dumb. Uh, right here. Alright. I'll reinforcement. Um... Get my rubies out of my inventory. Three of them. And. Yeah. I'm gonna get some metal salvage. This is a cool start though. I like I like what we're doing right now. Change our batteries over. Go to our Seamoth, go get some metal salvage. Let's go hang out near a wrecked ship. I think there was a, there's a bunch of metal salvage to be found um, by the sh in the direction of the ship, actually. Best part about upgrading to Depth Module Mark II is instantly being able, not instantly, almost instantly being able to upgrade to Depth Module Mark III, which is very exciting. Yeah, we'll put this hull upgrade on the sea moth because I do just be bashing it into things all the time. Such a densely populated ocean. It's a shame that I am reducing the population of this planet uh, every single time I venture out into the world. Now we get four pieces per metal salvage, I think, which is great. And inventory already full. Let's just store some stuff in there real quick. So I can pick up some more. Perfect. Get us our depth module mark three. So the moon pool can only house one vehicle at a time, so we're gonna have to share or just create a second moon pool. <coughs> I do wanna. Calorie intake recommended. Do wanna definitely look into extending the base outside of the moon pool as well. Have a little bit more happening, which would be very cool. Welcome 
aboard, Captain. Get in. <laughs> Get in. Why does it want to... Does the prawn... Oh, the prawn automatically has a bunch of storage. Okay. That makes sense. I keep accessing the storage of the prawn. And falling right through the ground. Can I not fall through the ground, please? Okay, so it's got storage. Nice. Automatically. Leave that prawn there. Duck the sea moth. We should. Uh, we got. We got to name the. Uh, we're gonna name the prawn suit, and we've got to give it a color and everything. We can't just call it like the Mapo Two. You know, that feels uninspired. It's got to be something else. The Cyclops was gonna be the other part of the Mapo name because it's Mapocolops. And then it was going to be the collops, just as like a full, you know. But then the prawn, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think I've got the, I think I've got a, an idea though, of what we can call it. Let's see how we go. All right, let's make a titanium ingot. Get some of my lithium. I definitely still have more lithium, right? Good thing God. So it's a good thing that we went and got our um all those rubies and stuff when we had the chance. We'll hold on to all that titanium for now and throw it all away. Put it in here. Um, so we're going to go find uh, one more diamond. Sorry, not one more diamond. Um, yes, one more diamond. And then we're going to find. Yeah, that's it. One more diamond, then we'll make a drill arm for the prawn suit. Lovely. Alright, let's do some upgrades. Give me that. Hull reinforcement. So this bad boy can actually survive. <clears throat> Depth module mark three. That's exciting. Barely got to even enjoy mark two. It would be great if it did stack. 900 meters. Hell yeah, I'm terrified. Okay. Which means we're gonna be going deep. Which means we're gonna take we're gonna take this solar charger off because this the the power cell we're we're gonna keep a spare power cell in here anyway for now, um, which is a good move I feel. Um, so that'll be okay. Oh crap! Actually, I think I think I'm out of water. I need to make some. I need to go make some water. We're gonna go do some some. I need to do some some bleach activities. <coughs> we had so much water and it's all gone. Um, we're gonna make a perimeter defense system because this might be good. And I say might. I say will be good for potential dangers nine hundred meters down. And we do get attacked a lot. So we're going to have a defense system. Now, to get polyaniline, what do we need to do there? Golden hydrochloric acid, deep shroom and salt. Okay, we can make these things. We are making moves, baby. We can make these things. I think it's really exciting when I look at these recipes and I'm just like, I have the equipment. There's something very satisfying about the the back and forth of me going through my my inventory and being like, look at what I can do, you know. It's kind of it's it's really cool. Okay. Um. Ah yes, my deep shrooms. That's right. The deep shrooms which I put here. 
right. This is why we just make sure we pick up everything that we can. And we're like, maybe we'll need that. And then we make polyaniline. And then I'll pull out my wiring kit that I had prepared earlier. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's make ourselves a perimeter defense system. Very satisfying. We haven't even, we haven't really even ventured out anywhere today. We're preparing for a journey. This is like the preparation on going on a big quest. Because now we can go to the deep sea facility. Look at that. Nice. Okay. Um, now let's store some things. Get that out of here. I don't think an air bladder is going to help us get to the, um, the surface, but we'll keep it anyway in case we need an extra 15 seconds to get back to the sea moth if anything happens. Um, <clears throat> if I, I've got the materials we need for the drill arm except for one diamond, and we'll probably find some more diamonds on our way. Now. It's going to be a big journey. So we're going to take some nutrient blocks with us for that food. Um, we are going to have some spare batteries with us and we'll put them in the Seamoth thing. Um, and then we're going to engage in some bleach adventures right now. We're going to bring... Um, yeah. How do I make this again? Salt and coral tube. Oh, nice. Um, perfect. Salt and coral tubes. That is easy enough to come by. Make a bunch of water. Hang on, this is this is different, isn't it? Yeah, this is this is different. New coral tube sample. <clears throat> now I think you can get them from those big actual coral tubes, but you can also see them just like um where are they? Like this, like this stuff as well, I think. Oh no, hang on, that's the different stuff. Yeah, this this stuff, giant coral tubes. Alright. Let's equip our blade. Perfect. I like that we've got one nearby. <coughs> Bleach time. I'm not sure how engaging or exciting this is for you guys to watch it, but it's exciting for me to do it. It's just this back and forth of like, look how rewarding this all is, you know? It's great. I love it. It's satisfying. I feel like a I feel like a cheeky little survivalist. I feel like I would not last in real life at all with this, but, you know, it's a video game and that's where it's fun. Alright, let's replenish those water reserves. Double the water. And even more hydration. Nice. Okay. Now, let's have a look. Put some stuff away, we will put all of our water away, and we will take... We'll probably take four with us, because we'll probably hang out around some hot spots that'll dehydrate us. That's looking bloody good to me, mate. Alright. Storage. Sea Glide, Propulsion Cannon. Um, we're going to store some stuff in here, like the batteries. And... Back up health and, and food. Lovely. Inventory is looking nice and open for some deep sea venturing. 
Just realized I need to actually drink some water before we leave too. There we go. Stocked up. We're now going to save the game. Uh, and I will... Um, we're going to name the prawn suit when we um, do the drill arm. When we get that. Alright. Ready to go. We can go 900 meters down now. <coughs> so at the end of last episode, we were... We entered a cave system. Uh, we entered a cave system. That was uh, to the southwest. And we reached that 300 depth capacity. But now... Nothing can stop us. We do. Uh, we do still need to find uh, Life Pod Seven, which is a kilometer southwest from the stern of the Aurora as well. So we'll probably make another attempt at that. And then I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure. But we've got perimeter defense, we got hull integrity, and we didn't have either of those before. So our Seamoth is now stronger. <laughs> and um, we'll kind of check out that cave system again if we if we find it and come across it. Should have made some, should have made some beacons actually. Hmm. I need to make, uh, I need to get into the habit of that. Um, I do definitely need to get into the habit of that. Making some goddamn beacons. So on our next return trip, we'll do that. We can check out the proposed Agassi habitat, which is cool. Trying to avoid bone sharks. Even though I guess we've got perimeter defense. So it'll be interesting to see how that actually works. back out in kind of familiar-ish territory. Now, we're going to ascend real quick. Because I want to see where we are in comparison to the Aurora. Point six K away from the prawn suit. And that's kind of lined up with the ship, but I think the ship is a little bit further out. We're just gonna go two hundred down. proceed in this southwest direction and see if we can find this life pod. Let's <laughs> see if we can find it. We've given an approximate location and this one feels like a little bit of a tougher one. Okay, so we're about 200 down now. And we're just going to go straight in this direction for a while. The fact that we're not seeing the seafloor though, I guess is our clues like we should be able to see 
something. Okay. Warning, entering ecological dead zone. Adding report <gasps> to data bank. Oh. What the fuck is that? Oh! What the fuck? Whoa! Holy shit. Look at that thing. Whoa. Ah! Oh my dear lord. Oh! Oh fuck. It just destroyed... It just destroyed my Seamoth. Oh my god. Like, no mercy just destroyed my Seamoth. Um, I think I lost all of my shit that was in it as well. And then it's just gone. Oh, fuck. Um... Oh! Um... Wow. You know what? I should have ran away, but I, I really let my uh, curiosity get the better of me there. I didn't think that I would. I was. I, I felt a bit more powerful than I probably should have. And then it just left me. Um, we found the ecological death zone. Um, Dude, there were like there were so many upgrades and everything that there was. We, I put my I put my whole fucking sub nussy into that sea moth. I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reload. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I said that I wouldn't do it, um, but you know what? I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> I want my sea moth back because that's ah uh, that's 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 really difficult brutal dude that was like that was like all of our shit and all of those uh all of those materials that i made i i i would like to um seek enjoyment by um by reloading that one actually it was only seven minutes ago this is why we saved before we departed <laughs> yeesh um Holy crap, guys. So there, that's an ecological death zone. Is that what I said? Ecological death zone? No, dead zone. Um, I feel like to mark the occasion... Um, <laughs> I feel like to mark the occasion... I just changed the color of my... Sh Ugh. Uh, can I... Oh, no. I accidentally clicked on it. All right, let's change it back. To mark the occasion... <laughs> Everybody say hello to the Mapo 2. Everybody say hello to the Mapo 2. Um, we're not going to make that mistake again. I'm going to grant myself a mercy on that there. If the game didn't want you to do it, um, the game would auto-save. So, you know what? I'm going to use that to my advantage. Because, uh, yeah, I'm very proud of the, the things that we made today. And I, w I don't think I was ready to let that go so soon. Um, there's like some sort of ghost fish. <coughs> there's some sort of ghost fish out there. Um, and it took us into the, the, the air. It took us on a beautiful ride. And um, I really let my curiosity get the better of me there. And I need to learn to just actually run away. Or swim away. Instead of going, wow, it's so cool. I, I would die immediately as a deep sea explorer. Because I'd be like, holy crap, look at that thing. And then I'd get eaten. All in the name of science. All in the name of science. 
Um, I should probably travel in the correct direction. We're going to go back out there. Um, at the very least, our lovely... Um, our lovely sea moth gives us a heads up that we are actually in that ecological uh, uh, dead zone. And that's where we're going to look for the life pod. Now, I wonder if those things, because it, it vanished as daylight came through, disappeared. I wonder if that's a nighttime thing, because that was terrifying. Yet, warning, you're in a dead zone. Here's a ghost fish. Um, I'm assuming that's another Leviathan class. I wanted to scan it so bad. Would a stasis rifle even work on it? It felt like it was translucent, but then at the same time, it could physically interact with the world around it, so... Goddamn. Alright, we're heading back out. <laughs> um, let's see how we do this time. All right, we are heading in a southwesterly direction. Once again. So it seems that we will be notified when we are in that dead zone and that's where we will look for the life pod. Oh! We're back here. Cool. That's where this is. Awesome. Should get some of those, uh... Should get some of those melons. Oh, that'll be good for me old, uh... Food and... And water? Oh, it's falling apart. Let me take a look at this. Have we scanned what this is? Coral shell play. Okay. Oh yeah, so that's just one of those. That's alright then. To the bottom of the ocean with you. Okay, so we're close to the floating island. <clears throat> So much easier to see you when it's light outside. Hopefully this means we're safe from whatever's happening down this way. I'm just going to continue. Maybe we'll head down a little now. We'll just keep going in this direction until we get the notification. <coughs> and then uh, and then run for run for our lives <laughs> if there's if there's trouble. Entering ecological dead zone. Adding report to databank. Okay. Oh, fuck me. Oh my god. Okay. 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 Run for your fucking life. <clears throat> Is there multiple? No, it's just one, and it's just really long. Oh my god. Um. Holy fuck, dude. The Mapo 2's is out here living. Oh my... Oh! <laughs> Fuck me! I don't know where I'm going, dude. I don't know where I'm going. I just need to go 200 meters down, I think. What the fuck? All I know is that I'm in a dead zone. We're gonna read... Uh... We're gonna read that Crater's Edge thing at some point. Oh my god! Oh! There's a couple of them! There's a couple of them! Ducking and weaving, baby! Ducking and weaving! 
Just duck and weave. Um, I'm in this dead zone. Where the where the fuck is this goddamn? Oh my god. Oh, there's a third one. There's a third one. Perimeter defense. I have. I don't even know which way's up anymore. I just know that we're going down. But it looks like I'm going in circles. Oh my god. This is fucked. Whoa! I know how to dodge them. You go up and then you just go right over the top of them. Holy shit. What is this? Why? I can't believe a life pod dropped out here. I don't think I'm going to find a life pod, dude. I don't think we find a life pot out here. I can't even see a landmass. I guess it's going to be right on the crater's edge because that's what the what that's what it's telling us, right? That this dead zone is we are at the the crater's edge. So I just need to find the edge somewhere in this fucking place. I'm so lost. I'm so lost, and I'm being chased. By fucking beasts! Oh my god. Oh, it's so close to me. Oh my god, there's... Ascend. Maybe I'll be safe if I just ascend. They can't attack me if I don't look at them. Oh, launch yourself into the fucking air. Oh god, it's with me. Oh god, it's with me. Quick, repair it! Repair it! Survive! <laughs> repair it! I'm getting chewed on! Get in! Oh my god! I need it <laughs> Let me take it! Ah! Holy shit! I'm getting eaten! When will they leave me alone? Okay. Oh, that was easy. All right. Oh, damn. So, uh, we're just messing around with, uh... With the... With the creeps in the dark. My god, man. Okay. I guess what this means is when it says entering the zone... And let me take a look at this entry. Crater Edge. Geological scans of this area show a steep decline in all directions. This data is consistent with the theory that the aurora crashed on the edge of a 2k by 2k volcanic crater. It has likely been millennia since an eruption reached the surface, encouraging the ecosystem within the crater to flourish. The ecology of the trench surrounding the crater supports only two kinds of life, microscopic and leviathan class. Exploration is ill-advised. Oh shit, dude. Okay. <coughs> so, that means we just have to look at the edge. We just have to see the very edge. But that means there would, there would be land, right? There would be some form of surface for the life pod to land on around 200 meters down. sunk to 200 meters in an area of low ecological activity and it looks like that so there should be a there should be a seabed here somewhere before it just dips into nothingness this journey to this thing has just been insane <gasps> oh i see landmass okay hang on let's have a look but this is so much deeper than 200 Now we're back around here again. Okay. Alright, well some landmass is better than none. And then we'll look and see where this... Where this dip is. Is this where the crater just dips? He 
This is the edge. There it is. Okay. This is the edge. So if we go out, if we go out here, this is where those goddamn leviathans are. I don't even know what to call them. But they're out there. This is all just chilling right on the edge. I love that this the game has a like an out of bounds. Oh, I like how the game has like an out of bounds thing to it. But it's got a story reason. Membrane tree. This entity defies neat categorization. It consists of more than one coral species working in tandem to create an insulated microcosm enclosed within a translucent membrane. Found exclusively growing on uh, basalt rock in the Grand Reefs, the homeostatic conditions within are considerably warmer and more dense with microbial life than, outs than the outside environment. And the bright purple fauna inside will likely die off quickly if exposed. Okay. I've been through so much to find this life pod that's just going to have like a blueprint for something I already have and a voice log of someone going, oh no, I don't know how to survive, and they died. Meanwhile, I'm the survivor out here, baby. Again, we are much further down than 200. But at the very least, we have landmass here. It's hard to oh it's hard to look for something in an environment where you obviously just you just have no fucking idea whatsoever. Even as much as you have like one photo. Um we haven't really seen anything at that angle to really showcase it. We will find it. We will find it. I think we've seen this when we were here the first time as well, so there is some wreckage here of the Aurora. Actually, this might be new because we haven't opened this. Ooh! Cyclops Thermal Reactor Module, goddamn wizard fish! I'm being attacked immediately! Right. Nope, we haven't actually been here. It's a good thing I brought more first aid kits. I had a feeling I'd need them. Ooh, actually, hang on. This might be, we might be onto something here in this area. We'll be around here for the life pod. We're just like panic searching. Oh, it's these things again. Look at these things, they're so cool. Uh, infinite mineral deposits. We are just so not in the right direction, I think, of where we were before. Maybe, maybe it's closer. Maybe, I think we may have gone just too far and we're just fucking around with dangerous level stuff. Um... Maybe I'll, we'll go a bit closer, and if, if we're one-ish one, one -ish kilometers away from here, I was just assuming that the distance from the actual stern of the ship would be a little bit more than the distance from the life pod itself. Okay, we find ourselves around more of these things. Oh, there's another big piece of Aurora there. It's 
just that there's none of these like bulbs in the photo for life pod 7 it's more of these type of rocky formations like it's similar to this but it's not um okay i think we might be onto something if it's around here so we're about okay just under a kilometer out from the life pod <coughs> So I think we want to be a little bit further. But it looks like it might be around this stuff. I might check. Let's have a look and see where we are based on the Aurora's stern because we might be a bit off course this is uh this is the most difficult one we've had to find yet okay so the stern is there <coughs> we want to go like 200 ish meters down so it might be around here. These rock there. Actually, this looks. All right, this is looking very much like what we need. Okay, I wonder if it's exactly 200 down. All I know is it's just gotten darker, which means it's just gotten more annoying for me to search. Actually, it might not be more annoying. It might stand out more with that, like, number seven on it. <gasps> oh my god, I found it. Guys, arduous journey completed. It's 170 meters down. <gasps> oh, infected bone shark. You can't see me. I'm invisible. Okay. Nice. Everybody, we have successfully found Life Pod 7, and it only took us encountering uh, ghostly. Oh, nice. Ghostly uh, Leviathan class. And what is that? An unusual doll. Is that Markiplier? Is that fucking Markiplier, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? We just scanned it and it just disappeared. Um, couldn't even pick it up. What the fuck? I got a toy car and then I scanned a, a Markiplier figure. Oh, hang on. An unusual doll. <laughs> a glass of titanium. Why? Okay. LifePod 7. Integrating new PDA data. Crew log. Okay, well. I was like, we're going to come here and it'll be something I already have and a crew log about how they died and can't survive. But no, instead it's a car, Markiplier, uh, and a crew log. Okay, we found LifePod 7. Wow. I've tried everything. The analysis circuits on the fabricator are fried. I can barely manufacture the most basic of materials. Want a battery? Here, have a children's toy. Need deep sea diving equipment? Have some lab tech. Hungry? I'll turn that fruit into dust for you. I'm going forward with trial and error. I hit every button here. It's got to make something useful eventually. So struggling to get a wor his fabricator working, and he ended up creating some weird shit. Okay. Good to know. Um, we found LifePod 7, and it was the most non-useful LifePod of all time. <laughs> And we've got a lot of just non-functional stuff. So I guess I could put that on my shelf. Let's pick it up. We came all this way. I may as well collect useless objects. And put it on my shelf. Okay. Um, we found LifePod 7. Did that live up to any expectations? I had none. And yet I'm still disappointed. 
<laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Um, let's get out of here. We did all of that. We did all of that. And now we found Life Pod 7. And now we don't have to do anything like that again. Until next time. While we're here in this environment, then, we are going to the proposed uh, Degasi habitat. We're going to check this place out. So not even 200 meters down. We went in such extravagant locations. We went all the way to that actual proper dead zone to the point where I was like, well, I guess it's going to be here somewhere, right? Before realizing that that is literally like the sort of pit of the world. And we just, and that's it. That's the edge of the world. <coughs> and we would just doomed to spiral around three of those things let's figure out how to get to this habitat god this place is so this world it's just so massive i'm about to make uh, the most realistic um i'm about to make the uh, I'm about to make the most realistic Subnautica playthrough ever in that I'm going to only explore 5% of the ocean. Just like... Uh, just like humans! I accidentally got out of the... I accidentally got out of my sea moth. And then I got warped into another dimension and then killed. Um, is my Seamoth still alive? Mapo 2, it's still alive! I died and lost some belongings. You bet I did. But at least I've got a cylindrical sample flask. Uh, I, I lost some things, apparently. Um, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, the only important things in life is, um, is my fucking hat collection. Um, I'd die if anything happened to my goddamn hat collection. Life would not be worth living if I could not have my peak hats and my Duretti hats next to each other. What would, what would life be like? I can't even, you know, oh my god, what's the point of a, oh! It can, it can sit on here. It does. There is a position in which this works. Perfect. Perfect shelf placement. <laughs> Perfect shelf placement. Ah, uh, yes, and my microscope that is just on the ground. Look, they have, these are my these are my interests, guys. These are my non-functional microscope, my fucking hat, and my toy car. And my arcade gorge toy. These are my interests. Okay. Um, Jesus. All right. I'm gonna cook some food. I'm gonna cook this spade fish. I'm gonna eat it. And then we're gonna go uh, <laughs> to retrieve my sea moth. Um, lost some things, unfortunately. That's just that's just the way of the world, dude. That's just the way of the world. All right. We're gonna take in the little, the pee cup. This is the cup that you pee in. Oh, it looks much bigger actually in real, uh, when you take it out of your inventory. Ooh. Now, if we take the prawn suit to go get the sea moth, it's like a problem when you need to go drive somewhere to like, you know, drive to go pick up a car, it just doesn't work. I don't have a friend. So, uh, my sea glide as well. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Guys, wait a minute. I have a spare sea glide here somewhere that I just chucked on the ground. My sea glide is in my sea moth. Uh, there's a sea glide here somewhere. There you go. Take that, everyone who got upset when I made a second sea moth. Turns out I needed it for this exact moment in time. When we need to go do emergency sea moth retrieval. Bet you guys feel real silly now. 
Bet you feel real silly now. All right, let's go get my sea moth back. I can't believe it's alive. All right, down we go. We're heading 500 meters down. We'll see what that does for our oxygen. We've got the rebreather on at the very least. And then, let's see what happens. I think we were pushed into a little cave, weren't we? Oh no, hang on. Okay. Oh, I'm being attacked. Hang on. That's not it. Oh, I think the entrance is the, here. Nope, that's where we just went down. Must be a deeper entrance. What is that there? Interesting. Okay. Got some of that uh, alien technology stuff going on. Right, the journey to figure out where we got pushed into begins. This is, uh, this is stressful. Finding your way back somewhere where you never expected to even be taken is tough. Alright, it's here. Here we go, we're back in this place, there we go. Whoa, what was that? That was different to the, like, the wizard fish, what that usually does. God, there's so many of them. Okay, get in. <clears throat> get in. I got my oxygen. We got the sea moth back. Sea moth is at full health. Oh, <gasps> what is that? Oh, it's a fucking sea spider. Fuck off. Oh, and it's not friendly. Of course it isn't. Fucking. A titanium mass somewhere in this area. What? Unable to confirm whether it originated on the Aurora. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Dude, these fish are just not happy to see me at all, man. Oh, it's a crab squid. Oh, it attacked the wizard fish. Nature is beautiful. Oh, it attacked me. No. All right, we scanned. We got the crab squid. I'm out of here. All right, let's go. Holy shit, dude. Okay. Titanium mass. Unsure if it's the Aurora. Well, it's got to be the Degasi habitat, right? Which is where? Proposed Degasi habitat here. Oh my god, look at this place. They wanted to live here? <clears throat> god damn. Okay. Crab squid? Large predator can be found in deep waters where it lurks amongst the blood kelp and membrane trees in search of prey. It can deploy a powerful electromagnetic pulse to defend itself. Oh, I think that's the green pulse that we just saw that we're like, what is that? Limbs. Ten limbs feature different appendages for swimming, walking, hunting, and possibly even tool use. Creatures caught in its grasp are expertly butchered and quickly consumed. Rays and other illuminated herbivores are its usual prey. <clears throat> and it will approach and attack any light source in the vicinity. Its EMP blast was likely developed as a response to predation by creatures with electrical hunting mechanisms. Intelligence. While crab squids appear to have large brains and a resemblance to the intelligent squids of Earth, the organ inside the creature's head is in fact its stomach, which it must feel with startling regularity. Assessment. Neutralizes electrical equipment. Lights uh, attract its unwanted attention. There you go. 
Okay. Oh, and here's the habitat, surrounded by them. And also I'm getting harassed by wizard fish. Ooh, we've got a radio message. Alright, we're gonna park the sea moth. I need to find... Uh, I thought that I didn't... I don't have my lights on! Go fuck with someone else. Where's the entrance? need a hatch. Is this the hatch? Oh, it's broken there. There's our way in. Gotcha. Alright. Holy shit, look at these fucking things. It doesn't like that I'm here. I gotta try and hide from it. Sounds so friendly. Alright. I've confused it. Now it has no idea where I am. knows exactly where I am. Would you imagine that? Okay. Aya. Aya. All toggles log three. It's the end. UPDA data. Unbelievable. I can't believe it's the end of Paul Toggle. I never would have guessed. With them making these habitats in the worst places possible. God damn. Okay. We are we are risking it for survival today, everybody. We are absolutely putting ourselves through the most arduous of tasks in the in the quest of knowledge. Okay. Paul Torgo's log one, three, the end. Came out of nowhere. An alien kraken, bigger than a cyclops. Okay. Tore a hole clear through the reinforced hull. I barely got my breather in time. I told her. I said others would come. The rupture threw me clear of the habitat, and the monster turned and bore down on me. And just as its tentacles came within reach, neither appeared out of nowhere. She had a sea glide in one hand, a jagged piece of scrap metal in the other. She meant to butcher that beast or die trying. The last I saw her, she had the metal lodged in its neck as the monster did its best to shake her, contorting off into the darkness. I'm certain she got her wish one way or another. Then I thought I saw a light deep below me. I hope maybe Bart had swum clear. I followed it. Now I wonder whether I saw anything at all. Our oxygen is low. The habitat is gone. I can't see the sky. Something surely has the scent of my blood. Dude, that is horrifying that is horrifying my god Tagasi voice log 7 UPDA data Milady. swim charge fins Whoa. Ooh. it's doing its electromagnetic pulse Got a coffee vending machine <coughs> A carry all? Anything in there? Nope. Okay. Please stop fighting and listen. We're sick. What? How? You've been coughing, right? Feeling itchy? Blisters? Yeah. The biometrics would have warned us if we were sick. It's something new. It's not in the database. Come on, then. What's it gonna do? Turn us inside out? Dissolve us into jelly? It's an alien bacteria. It's everywhere. Every organism on this planet. It's altering our genetic code. Uh, how are the creatures surviving if they're infected? I don't know yet. Want me to cut some of them open for you? Find out what makes them tick? No. Just tell me what you need, son. <coughs> Materials. Equipment. Just... Can I have some quiet? I need some time to think. Okay. This showcases... Well, this is communicating, <clears throat> like, first and foremost, that this infection existed already. Um, and not caused by the Aurora. Right? 
and the <clears throat> our lovely voice is just telling us our lovely robot lady is just telling us what she knows at this current point in time you know she's assuming that the infection would be caused by our radioactive spread you know I assume um unless this is just a different type of infection back then as well <clears throat> Get me in here, baby. Oh, you're goddamn trying, but you can't get me in here, baby. Oh, you're still trying. They're they're both trying to they're both trying to get me. Goddamn. Oh my god, they're really trying. It's almost as if I've got that flashlight on. Where my sea moth at? There it is. My Seamoth just almost got destroyed in all of the electromagnetic pulses, I think. There's one thing that you guys need to know about me is I'm a fucking survivor. Okay. I don't think that's the titanium mass that they were talking about, because that's not very large. So this... Let's listen to this note again. Scan show extensive cave networks below the surface. Entering the dead zone. No, oh, wait. No? <clears throat> He's talking about titanium mass. Why hasn't it been added to the... Interesting. Okay. I didn't imagine the titanium mass. They just be they just be glitching through the environment. We got uh, wizard fish down here as well. Uh, we need to go to this. Uh, what is this? We need to go to this uh, deep sea research facility and figure out what's going on with this infection asap. I reckon. So there's a there's a kraken apparently as well. So that's fun. Dude, look at the ray. I wish I wasn't getting harassed. I just want to explore. Amoeboid. I'm gonna go scan this ray real quick. Are you a nice ray? You're not gonna Steve Irwin me? Ghost ray. It is ghostly, so that other thing must be a ghost leviathan of some kind, because they look similar, like this translucent thing about them. This ray species has adapted to deep sea conditions. Its body is fully protected by a translucent skin and its large wings are capable, capable of generating considerable thrust. Poisonous flesh, as is common for rays on 4546B, the ghost ray's flesh is inedible, making it one of the more resilient herbivores. Feeding behavior feeds on plant matter that has settled on the ground in deep sea caverns. Cool. Let's have a look at... Um, Amoeboid. A simple non-sentient organism found attached to land with high levels of fossilized organic matter. It feeds on this matter until it reaches maturity, at which point it divides to create two new genetically identical offspring and the cycle continues. Wow. Cool. Whoa. What the hell is going on down here? <clears throat> All I know is it terrifies me. Alright, let's open the storage real quick because I'm hungry. Let's pull out some food. Uh, we need. I need to be careful on my um, my med kit. Health plus fifty. That's exactly what I got. Let's drink. I can afford to get a little bit more hungry before I eat that nutrient block. This looks like a giant bone. I can't scan it though. Do you reckon I can go underneath here? This feels like it's gonna be poisonous or something. <gasps> yep, <laughs> I was like, this feels like it's gonna be poisonous. Doesn't feel like it's gonna be good. It's poisonous. Can I go under there in the sea moth then? Yes. 
Maybe it's acid. And that would make sense if there's bones that have, like, eaten the flesh off of things. Oh, there's stuff here, but it's also... Oh, the prawn suit would be good for this, because I could pick this shit up, right? I don't know how much life I got. Okay, that does a lot of damage. But this is where we get crystal and sulfur. Dude, this is where we get crystal and sulfur. I need that for something. I'm not sure what. What do we need crystal and sulfur for? Ooh, wirelessly charges your held tool while you swim. Oh, dude, we can charge our tools while we swim. Cool. Look at us go. Just call me uh, Bear Grills of the Ocean. We are, we are fearlessly navigating these waters. Um, there's something cool um, that can be done with, I can't remember what it was, that we need that sulfur for. Uh, not a good idea to grab it out of the sea moth unless we're really quick about it. Uh, I think this is, this is prawn suit level activities. I think the Cyclops, th did it say that the Cyclops is, because it's like a submarine, is the Cyclops big enough um, to house a vehicle? Because then you get a Cyclops submarine, you put a prawn in it, right? Yeah, dry dock for transportation. Okay. This is what we need, and this is what we're not here doing at the moment. We need a Cyclops, and we need to dock some vehicles in it, and we need to go deep sea diving, baby. Right now, we're doing this with a sea moth, uh, which feels incredibly dangerous. But here's the thing. Cyclopses are huge, right? So they make yourself a target. But if you're like a cheeky little guy, you can slip by undetected. Uh, so we've got like acid pools or something at the bottom of an already treacherous ocean. Like roots and everything. This is cool. Uh, at the very least, we've got the beacon for the Degasi habitat, which is nice. So we'll be able to come back here. Um, pretty easily and check this out. Very cool. But we need a Cyclops and then we'll park the Cyclops here, go diving in the prawn suit. The prawn suit can pick up cool materials. Bada bing, bada boom, you know what I mean? I got another radio message and... That does not look nice. Terrain scans indicate this biome contains unusually high concentrations of organic and fossilized remains. Oh fuck, it's one of those things. Oh, it glows when it's like aggressive. Okay, so it's not like a ghost one at all. It's like solid like that. It's like a hammerhead. And then it glows when it's like attacking. Fossilized remains. Oh my god, look at this thing! I'm gonna like... This is how we take a photo with F11, I think. Screenshot saved to PDA. Does it save the screenshot with the UI? Oh, it doesn't. That's so cool. Oh, it's blurry. It's blurry. Wow. Let's hide in here. <gasps> I can't! Ooh! I thought I could hide in the eyeball. I was gonna quickly go and hide. I wanna hide in it to protect myself. Wow! Look at the rib cage, dude! Whoa! Under the sea. Under the sea. Oh, man. This is so fucked up. I 
I feel like I'm like in an underwater version of Zen from Half-Life. Ryan Lily. Scan some things. Pyro Coral. We'll read these when we're in a little bit more of a safer environment. This is so cool. Welcome aboard, Captain. It's like, hey guys, we need a Cyclops, but what if we just kept fucking around? this stuff. This is what I would think I was trying to have a look at before I got walked away by the wizard fish. Oh, it's just nothing. Natural lighting. Okay. <coughs> look at the giant fossilized remains of this creature, though. That is massive. I need to keep an eye on the power of my sea moth as well. It's very hot down here. Ooh. Oh no, that's amoeba. I thought that was a... I don't think we'll see any data pads or anything in this location. That's for sure. River Prowler. Hold, hold still. Hold still. Hold still. Don't attack my ship. Only attack my ship if you're gonna let me scan you. River Prowler. Risk your life for the information. Ugh. We are definitely not gonna be able to scan that Leviathan class fucking thing. Just go low. Go low, dude. Avoid it by going low. Oh shit. Does it go further now? Oh my god. Whoa. I was expecting this to be quite shallow. I mean, it is, I guess. We got some mineral deposits down here. Hide from it down here. Look at this. You can't get me in here, you bastard. Whoa. But now I can get a good look at it. It's F11. I want to get a good screenshot of this. Show my show my friends back home. I wonder if I can. Ooh, I wonder if I can get a cheeky scan on it here as well. I'm tempting fate here. Dude. Look at that thing. Calorie intake recommended. Oh, I can scan. Oh, I can just scan the full skeletal remains. Yum. Oh, gargantuan fossil. Scan that bad boy. We're just casually 760 meters down. I can get away with scanning it. I think these things, you have to like scan their heads. That is one hell of a scream. Eat? Anyone hungry? Anyone hungry? Anyone thirsty? Just a nice little cheeky, uh, you know, adventure. Pyrocoral is unlike any other encountered on this planet so far as it relies on magma flow rather than water current to deliver nutrients. As lava rises up from the planet's core and erupts at vents, this coral forms around the base until eventually it has surrounded the entire vent. 
Lava is then funneled up through the coral, allowing it to siphon materials and heat as it goes. Cool. All right. I like how there's a deceased section. The river prowler, fast, agile predator discovered at great depths. Powerful jaws used for both savaging prey and warding off larger predators. And its eel-like torso is highly vulnerable, consisting predominantly of spinal column and cartilage. It shows significant overlap with other eel-like predators on the planet. And attack profile, it will aggressively keep its jaws facing its opponent, but smaller, faster life forms may have the advantage. Me. Enough to scan it, at least. Deceased gargantuan fossil. The fossilized remains of an extinct super predator, its sheer size would have prohibited it from entering such an enclosed space, suggesting the geography of the planet has shifted around it over time. A true apex predator. Dated at approximately 3 million years old, ribcage measurements suggest the creature was eel-like in structure. Calculations suggest this is only the front third of the specimen. The remains now support a vibrant microcosm of life. There are a series of precise angular indentations on the ribcage, suggesting a third party has taken samples from the specimen at a previous time. Vital signs stabilizing. That's cool. All right, we're going to leave now. We're going to leave. Those things really sense you and want to get a bite out of you from a big distance away too. Alright, we are leaving for now. We will be coming back. Um, we will be coming back with a Cyclops. We'll be coming back with a Cyclops. And we'll have a prawn in there. And it'll be great. At the moment, I th I'm very proud of my little sea moth and what it's doing at, at uh, 700 meters. He's worked really hard to get to this random point. I have no idea where I am. But we know that we can get back here through the Degassi habitat at the very least. At the moment, I'm in that mood of just like, so curious, you know, and I'm just like seeing how far I can take it. We're just like, fuck yeah, I've got, a, I've got 900 meters of depth on this bad boy. Let's see how deep we can go. When's, when's the seafloor? I want to meet it. You know what I mean? So crazy. All right, let's get out of here. I think I'm trying my best. I think what I'm doing is just picking directions and checking things out like this in the way that we've been doing it is helping me not get overwhelmed with the sheer amount of places to go and things to explore and things to do, which is kind of nice. I'm just like, fuck it. We'll just go in directions and we'll pick things up and then We'll follow along, you know, our objectives as we go as well. And I think that's helping me enjoy the experience a lot instead of just being like, ah, there's so much to do, what the fuck, you know? I'm really liking the idea of having a healthy mixture between just fucking choosing a direction and running off and actually doing what we're supposed to do so we'll probably be heading to that we'll probably be heading to that place soon uh the facility um to figure out what's going on with our infection love that via a voice note we've now found out that there is a kraken like species out there also not at all terrifying we've we know where we can get some crystalline sulfur now though so that's cool Just go take some acid baths with the prawn to pick it up. <laughs> Nothing but silence. And the sound of my sea moth scraping, hugging the edge of the world right now as we See how deep we can go.
approaching maximum depth. Warning, maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. <laughs> and that's my seamoth getting destroyed. <laughs> oh my god. And that is why I saved, because we were being we were being silly on purpose, see, testing the limits. I wanted to see how far we could go, and then naturally uh, we were obliterated uh, for our sheer curiosity, which is why I saved. Um, okay, now I need to actually make sure that I can survive this. I just wanted to look around for a bit. I just, I just wanted to have a cheeky, cheeky little look around. All right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? Let's go back to our ship so we can check the radio message, please. I'm fine doing little cheeky reloads like that as well if it's like we're gonna like fuck around for the sake of just some fun curiosity like we'll be like we're, go we're gonna go you know as deep as we can go for a second and see what happens and then that's the result you know for funsies back to the base These things, these things might just be like my favorite thing that we've come across. I don't know. There's just something about them that is just so magical. I don't know. I love them. And look at all of the goddamn mineral outcrops that, that come up. And it's, and it's all shale. And then they are also shitting themselves. That's some feces. But look at this. You ever want to just get some good high-grade materials? Uh, not to be mistaken with some poop that sometimes rolls across? Just come hang out with these guys. Oh, we got another radio message. Nice. And there's just so much to gather of it as well. It's incredible. Look how many there are. Oh my god. So there's like four here and then there's two down there. I don't know, this this is just fucking amazing. So, and I'm just swimming. I'm just swimming between them. Picking up what they dropping, you know? Trying not to get crushed under their beautiful legs. And it's like, just don't mind me, fellas. I'm here. I'm just digging up. Digging for gold, literally. The diamonds are a plus. There you go. Oh, damn. You want some good inventory? Just come here, hang out with these bad boys. They are so cool. Alright. That, that's enough. I want to, like, pet you. Pet you. Look at him. So nice. Right, let's get my sea moth back. Casting a nice little spotlight on our endeavor there. Alright, I think we've got... Uh, I'm not sure when the radio signal pops up if that's multiple messages or not. Um, but I think if we're, if we're understanding it correctly, we should have uh, multiple messages waiting for us now. We've had a few come through. Okay. Careful not to make contact with the invisible moon pool legs. Welcome aboard, Captain. Lovely. All right, we're good. Charging the dock. Radio messages. First things first. 
This is Life Pod 2, coordinates attached. We're way past our safe depth and bleeding O2. We'll have to swim for the surface, but it's 500 meters straight up. We'll make for the rendezvous and keep you posted. Out. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Um, hang on. Uh, has it not been uploaded to the PDA yet? And it's just that one radio message, even though we've had the notification a few times. Um... Yeah, acidic brine pool, so it is acid pools. Cool. Um... Aurora survivors. Nothing on life pod 2. But I wanted to... <clears throat> I think that... Yeah, I we have seen this already. Okay, cool. We've we recognized the, the name you. So they already made it to the rendezvous. So this is like, we're getting like, obviously, uh, quite delayed messages that come through over time. I have to swim to the surface, uh, 500 meters straight up, we'll make for the rendezvous. Okay. Well, we know that they made it to the rendezvous, but <clears throat> that's as far as that goes. Okay. Uh, we can make ourselves a drill arm, which is exciting. So let's do that. We're also going to make some. Uh, we're going to make some beacons as well, which you can do with uh, titanium and copper. So we'll have some beacons in our inventory for uh, for when we need it. Prawn suit drilling arm. Nice. Now we'll get, need need the prawn suit in here for that to actually happen. Um, let's drop all of this stuff in here as well. Let's get my copper. My titanium. So we're gonna make three beacons to have on hand. I think that's uh, I think that's good. Deployable beacons. There we go. Because we keep finding ourselves in situations where we'll be like, it'd be nice if we had a beacon, and I keep forgetting. Lovely. So we'll have a couple. I keep falling into the water every single time. Um, and we'll put them in here. I think it would be a good idea to put them in here. Because while we're exploring the Seamoth, we'll then drop them. Um, we can get this Sea Glide out of here. Our second Sea Glide, which came in handy for us to uh, get our uh, Seamoth back. Just store that in there for now, I guess. Um, now, prawn suit arm. I think to upgrade the arms, we probably need to have it in here. So let's drop this real quick. All systems online. Welcome aboard, Captain. So we're gonna go f scan some. There we go. We're gonna go scan for some Cyclops upgrades so we can build that bad boy, and then go deep sea diving. All right, we got a drill arm now. I can get cool materials, and then we got ha! one of these. We can pick stuff up. Oh shit! We could also destroy natural resources. Ooh, cool. You can actually just destroy stuff. Very nice. Uh, you don't want to do that. I definitely picked up one acid shroom, and it's not in my inventory, though. 
Interesting. Pick up. Huh. It's definitely doing the like a pick up, like it's like, look. Softly picks that up and it disappears, but it doesn't go into my inventory. What's the deal with that? Why isn't it picking up? That's weird. It feels like otherwise how am I supposed to pick stuff up from the from those acid pools, right? Is that too aggressive? It can't pick up soft materials, it can only pick up hard ones? Or is it a bug? I'm not sure. I am not sure. Welcome aboard, Captain. Oh, okay, life pod two is just marked on. Right, I'm so used to all of the life pods being like signal corrupted. You know, I'm so used to it being signal corrupted that I don't even uh, realize that it's just straight up a beacon for us to follow. Well, I'm going to give time for my sea moth to charge. And while I do that, I'm going to charge up some equipment uh, and then we're going to go to life pod 2 uh, while I've been recharging equipment, rearranging everything the power's gone out and I think that uh, our reason the reason for that is we're obviously charging uh, the sea moth so we only have the one solar panel um, and that's kind of all we've needed so what we're going to do is I think we're going to try and build a thermal plant so it converts heat to energy at medium efficiency so we might be able to also do, with that thermal thing that's nearby use that to power this base so titanium magnetite and some aerogel is uh, is what's required uh, for this so let's get some magnetite um, I think aer aerogel Need to remember how to make aerogel. It's a good thing I've got a blueprint thing in case I ever forget. Uh, gel sack and ruby. Which I do have gel sack. And I do have ruby. So that's good. And some titanium. How much titanium is it? Titanium 5. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Alright. Um, can't use the fabricator because there's no power. So do you know what's a really good thing? Is having a fabricator <laughs> in your life pod. And this is why we still have our base close by. Definitely for no other reason. Okay. Uh, let's make aerogel. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we should be able to make a thermal plant. Now, let's see how the thermal plant actually uh, works, I suppose. So we can build it, and I guess we put it on the ground. Um, so if we put it... I'm assuming... I'm not entirely sure how this works. Um... I'm assuming it, like, hang on, let's, let's have a look, because it looks like it just kind of chills. Um, let's have a look, because we definitely are able to learn about it in here. Uh, power thermal plant um, converts heat electricity, heat energy into electricity. I'm assuming because there's something you can make that extends the range of the power source that it just kind of connects to it. So if we just put it here. I haven't even built it, but apparently the power's restored. Okay. Okay. It's only like 26 degrees, but I think 
Ah, oh, actually, it's daytime now. All that time, all that time that I've spent. All right, it's apparently at power zero out of 75. So it's a power zero out of 75, but also, is it working? I don't know. It's like right underneath it. We're like near the thermal thing. Maybe it needs to go further down. Maybe if I deconstruct it, we get our stuff back, it looks like, which is good. And then maybe we can build like the increased range thing. So I need some gold for that. Let's get closer to this thermal spot. Maybe I build it like here. Just wondering if there's any, there's not sort of a visual communicator. I'm just going to build it here. It's a little closer to this place. Ah, oh, that made, that made no difference to the temperature at all. Um, and then this. Okay, we can do this to extend the, how much? How far away can we get? I guess you could... What we could do is we could chuck that all the way in the bottom, actually, and then make a bunch of these. Just gold and titanium. Okay. Um, might be able to make a couple of them and put it even further down. All right, let's see if we can get this to work. All right, let's get <clears throat> some gold. Let's get some, ti some titanium. Let's go further down with this and put it right in there. <coughs> I like that if you make a mistake with placement, you can just deconstruct things and just get it all back, which is very nice. All right, we're going to go down here. It's really hot down here. And we're going to build it here. And I'm assuming this has got to be probably the best place to do it. Look at all those dead fish in the bottom there. Right. It's now 66. And now what we can build is these. Um, we just have to see the range of it. Um, can we, like, attach it to the ceiling? Or does it have to be on a flat surface? Oh, no, there you go. You can attach it to... I know, it's very hot. We'll figure this out. Alright, as long as we get this line, alright cool, there we go, I'm gonna put it there, and then if we build another one, will that connect to, oh shit, no, ah, uh, you can't, alright, I was hoping that it would connect, hmm, you can see what I'm going for, right, where it's like a series of connectors that like, But it seems that it doesn't work. Okay. I need to put more thought into this. Um. Okay. I've got the right spirit. I just unfortunately do not have the right position. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was thinking I would ex just continue to extend the power out until it would get to here. But now by the time that I've done that, I don't even have a power problem anymore. <laughs> uh, we'll figure it out. We'll do something. We'll do something with it. Oh god, again? With the alien radio message. Except that was it that time. Was, was that our attempt at them communicating with us with the hunting and analyzing? Is that was scary. Uh, that was scary. Okay, well, that was my little uh, crash course on how to fail at building a thermal plant. Um, we'll try again next time. Uh, let's go to LifePod 2. <clears throat> okay, uh, before we leave, and uh, while it's daytime, uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to put some of the salt panels on here. Um, and I'm assuming that more solar panels equals more energy. Put that bad boy on there. 
make a, make a few of these on each side. Learn our lessons from needing to charge a sea moth uh, and running out of power at night time. Oh, hang on. Uh, I'm missing ah, uh, missing my two quartz. Of course I am. Uh, should just be able to get some down here. I think there is some. Um, if I remember correctly, there should just be qu yep. Quartz just chilling on the floor here. One of these days I will have a thermal reactor and it will be incredible. It'll be the greatest thing ever. Today is not that day though. I like how you can place things to build without having the materials and then you can come back for it to build it. So you can at least like place it and think about it. There you go. Okay. So more power? Oh yes, nice, cool. We can go up to 300 now with our four solar panels. That is much better. The one got us by, you know, like it did the job. It did what was, was necessary until um, it no longer could, you know. Okay. Life Pod 2 is going to be our final expedition of the episode. So let's journey, let's journey down here. So it's 500 meters down. And then I think our goal for next time will be to go to this uh, 800 meters, 800 meter research facility to figure out what's going on with the infection because that seems to be quite a time sensitive thing um, for us to worry about, you know. So this was uh, used life pod before she abandoned it. And yeah, unfortunately, due to the fact that we've gone to the rendezvous point, we know what's kind of happened with her. Is this a fragment for something I don't have? I think I've got the bioreactor. Yeah. Sometimes when you see a unfamiliar fragment, you're like, eh, do I have that? Um, another objective of ours is to find Cyclops fragments as well, because we need to build ourselves a submarine, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so we'll hang out around some places like this, I suppose. This place is quite large, actually. Whoa. What happened to my electrical field? Zap them, goddammit. <clears throat> Um, there may be Cyclops parts here. This is a massive part of the ship. Look at that. Like, considering how we've found, uh, you know, in the Aurora itself, They've got the, like, Prawn Bay and Seamoth Bay. The Cyclops Bay may have, like, fallen off, you know? Detached. Stasis? Ooh, stasis rifle fragment. Nice. Alas, I do not need it. Oh, hello. Oh, the prawn suit can have a propulsion arm. That's awesome. A chic plant pot. <clears throat> New blueprint acquired. Acquired.
Ah, nice. So we can get in from the top there. We'll just see what's in here. Maybe we have some Cyclops fragments. Maybe not. The Cyclops fragments might be littered on the floor. I think there's multiple pieces to it that we need to find. It's not just as simple as uh, a couple of fragments. Because I think if we have a look, the Cyclops, we've got the engine. Yeah, you need to build an engine, which we've got that. We've actually got the Cyclops itself, the hull. So we've got a few things to find on that front. Prawn suit grappling arm. Okay, so we're getting a lot of prawn suit stuff in here. Not Cyclops stuff, but still vehicle related. <clears throat> oh, an actual prawn suit itself. Power cell charger fragment. That's good. One out of two. It looks like that might be. Oh. P R A W N safety instructions appendix A fourteen. Don't climb on or get off equipment while it's moving. Thank you. Uh, we got some data and we got another sealed door. <clears throat> Gotta watch our oxygen. I guess that download was just a voice log. Prawn safety instructions. Don't climb on or get off equipment while it's moving. Okay. More stasis fri rifle fragment. Stasis Frifle Ragment. 30 seconds. Okay. <coughs> and we're out. Okay. Oh, infected shark. Oxygen. I think, um... Did I... have I put my sea glide in the storage of this thing, or have I left it behind? Yeah, right, I got it with me. Cool. Got it. Lovely. Alright, uh, not Cyclops parts. But we won't give up. We will not give up hope. The Cyclops parts will be somewhere. I'm actually really excited to have, like, a submarine like a big boy submarine with some vehicles in it. And then that's like a mobile base. The infection is definitely spreading quite rapidly. Something that I'm curious about, another radio message, something that I'm curious about <clears throat> is the infection or a variation of it has been here before us with, with these the Garcy logs. These Degasi logs, but then, um, you know, we're seeing it spread and we're infected by it, and we were saying that it was coming from the Aurora, so it might be a mixture of both. I think we've scanned these before, but it's very interesting seeing it. This is like a big root version of it. Blood root. Ah, oh, the blood vine is what we've scanned before. These root systems generally extend from one cave wall to another. Coiled root system. When this root system breaks through into open water, its tendrils coil around one another for enhanced structural integrity. Where the root meets cave wall, it penetrates into the rock and continues to grow at a slower rate. Both blood, rot, blood rot roots 
can't talk today, and blood vines produce blood oil pustules, confirming they are in fact one and the same flora species. The majority of the root system thrives within the rock itself, occasionally breaking into open water to reach untapped mineral resources, or generating vines which feed on water-based nutrients. This is such a magical game. I love how beautifully alien everything is. Like, it's it's just so cool. All oh, the neat little things that they've, like, come up with. <clears throat> oh, hello. I've got defense, but I don't think that's going to work against that thing, actually, because it's electricity versus electricity. And all I know is it's coming for me. Does it like, I'm wondering if it senses my electromagnetic waves or not, or if it's like also attracted to light. I love this music when it comes in though. All right, we're in here. Integrating new PDA data. Flotation devices failed. We're flooding. Evacuate. Wait, I can reconfigure the O2 system to act as a bilge pump. It's working. Okay, good news. We're alive and we've stopped sinking. Bad? The oxygen's going to run out in 30 minutes and we're 500 meters down. What do we do? We'll have to use the remaining juice to send a distress call and build whatever gear we can. Then we find a way to the surface. <clears throat> I don't think Berkeley made it to the rendezvous, so... Obviously she ate him to survive. Alright, there we go. Made it to life pod 2. And every time that we go out and we do a radio call, there's another one waiting for us when we get back home. But this is where we're going to bring this episode of Subnautica to a close. We'll be chasing the other radio message next time and exploring way more. Uh, this was a bit of a chaotic episode. It's a bit all over the place. Um, we did reload a couple saves. <clears throat> one of them a serious reload. The other one just a little bit of a, a funny one. Um, because I truly put a lot of effort into creating... Jesus, you should be further down. You weird squid thing. Um, I put a lot of effort into like what we built and I was so proud of it. And then I took it out and it got absolutely massacred by a ghost leviathan of some kind. Um, and that's my bad. But, you know, it's, uh, outside of that chaos, we've had some really, really cool discoveries. We can now go 900 meters down, which is which is really cool. There's so much going on in this in this ocean and so many regions to like find new things and um, can be overwhelming, but you just need to persevere and just be like, you know what, I'm, not, I'm just going to go in a direction, find what I find and then <clears throat> have fun doing it. And I'm having a tremendous amount of fun. This game is uh, is really good. Just that freedom to just do whatever the hell you want. Go wherever, build wherever, build whatever. Uh, it's, yeah, it's really neat. Uh, but we're going to head back to this base and bring this episode to a close. Next time, we check out this radio message, and then we're also going to head to that deep sea research facility. So we'll head back to that sunbeam um, spot. We'll head back to that sunbeam spot. Uh, find that little base, and then we're going to um, follow it down in the direction that there has been provided to us uh, to find this facility. So thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.